Today I'm going to talk you through the basics of wiring an outlet and hopefully help the process make a ton more sense if you're new to DIY or just interested in seeing what it takes to wire your own project. We'll connect this to some circuitry knowledge that you may already have and I'll show you a common and critical mistake that many DIYers make while they're running their own wiring so be sure to stick around for that. Let's start with some circuitry basics. We're going to go old school here for a minute so hang with me. You may remember schematic diagrams for circuits from science class back in the day. Circuits start with a power source, like a battery, and electricity, or specifically electrons, move from the hot side of the power source, travel along a conducting wire to something like a light bulb, and return to the other side of the power source. The driving forces behind this flow are simply attraction and repulsion forces. Opposites attract, so electrons, which have a negative charge, are attracted to the positive terminal and repelled by the negative terminal where they are in excess. Now, if there's a break in the circuit, if it's, say, opened by a switch, the electrons have no way to make it to the other side, and so the light goes out. Close the circuit again, and the electrons continue movement and light up the bulb again. It's a little more complicated with the alternating current in our residential homes, but the wiring applications can be thought of in the same way. Instead of a battery, the power source from my house comes in from the utility company and feeds into my breaker box for distribution throughout the house. For any one circuit, like the 20 amp circuit that will be supplying power to the outlets in this room, a copper conducting wire supplies the power to the outlets and another copper wire completes the circuit by giving the electrons a path to return back to the electrical panel. The supply line, or hot wire, has black insulation around it while the return, or neutral wire, has white insulation around it. Your home wiring looks a little different from the schematic diagram because these wires run right next to each other in one protective outer jacket, and this is called Romex. A third wire, called the ground wire, which isn't insulated, also comes in the Romex, and it serves a protective function by giving rogue electrons a place to conduct through for safety reasons. Step one for wiring outlets, and this is step one for every electrical job, is to shut off the breaker to your circuit that you're working with. I know you may think that you can just skip this step and be careful, but don't. Just pretend that your wife or your mother are watching your every move. So we have a black hot wire bringing power out from the 20 amp circuit that will be connected to one of the gold terminals to the outlet. And the neutral white wire running from a silver terminal on the outlet completing the circuit back to the electrical panel. When something's plugged into this outlet, power will be supplied from this port for, say, a hot glue gun, and the circuit will be completed through this port of the outlet when it connects from here back to the electrical panel. I will, of course, be installing more than one outlet in this room, and so I want to show you how to install it and how not to install it next. As a DIYer, your intuition may tell you to wire up multiple outlets by supplying power with a black wire coming into the first outlet on one gold terminal and out of the other gold terminal to the next outlet. Same with the white neutral wires to the silver terminal. While you can totally do it this way, if you open up the other outlets in your home done by an actual electrician, you'll notice they're done a little differently. The hot supply line comes into the electrical box, but it doesn't connect directly to the outlet. Here's what it does instead. The hot black wire from the supply line connects to two black wires in the electrical box. One runs to the outlet for the box, and the other continues the circuit on to the next outlet. The same happens with the neutral white wires. The white coming into the box also doesn't directly connect to the outlet. Instead, it connects to two other white wires, one that runs to the outlet for this electrical box and the other that continues the circuit from the next outlet. Same with the ground wires. A short ground jumper wire coming off of this outlet connects to the two ground wires from the Romex coming into the electrical box and they're all twisted together. Let's talk about why it's done this way. Notice when you skip the jumper wire step and connect directly to the first outlet, electrons will actually have to move through the metal between the gold terminals on the first outlet to get to the next outlet in the room. So every time you're running electricity from any outlet in the circuit, it's moving through the previous outlets to get there. This can cause the metal on the outlet to degrade over time and eventually it could fail or become a hazard. If you run power to each outlet through a jumper wire instead, like this, you won't give your outlets that double workout. Please keep in mind while I show you this that I am a science teacher by trade, not an electrician. If any of this doesn't make sense, please consult a professional. Having said that, if you have any questions or suggestions, just drop a comment below and I'll try to answer them. Since I'm running my outlets on a 20 amp circuit, I'm using 12-2 Romex with a yellow jacket. 
Each electrical box, aside from the last one in the circuit, will have a pair of 12-2 Romex wires running to it. For each, carefully strip off about six inches of the yellow outer jacket and remove the paper inside. Then, follow the directions on your wire nuts or wagos, whatever you're using to connect your wires, to strip the correct amount of insulation from each wire. Next, prep your outlet. Cut a six inch piece of Romex and remove the black, white, and ground wires from the jacket. Your outlet will have a strip gauge on the back, which you'll need to follow to make sure you strip the right amount of wire, and connect your black, white, and ground wires to the outlet as I described earlier. Since the opposite side of those black and white wires will be connected with your wire nut or wago, Again, follow the directions for whatever connective device you're using. You'll end up stripping the same amount of wire as you did for the black and white wires on the 12-2 Romex that are running into the electrical box. Now your receptacle is prepared and you tie it all together. Connect your three black wires together, your three white wires together, and twist your three ground wires together. If you're using a wire nut for your connections, be sure to give it a few extra twists after it's tight to wrap the wires around each other and offer some additional connection security. When finished, carefully tuck those wires into the electrical box and screw your outlet into position. Continue this approach for each outlet in your circuit. When you're finished, flip on that breaker and test your outlets to ensure they're wired properly. If you'd like to see how to run that 12-2 Romex into those electrical boxes, I've got a video you can check out right up here. After seeing this video, if you feel like I've earned your subscription, you can drill that ManCycle logo there. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.